with China's Chang'e 6 robotic probe's recent successful soft landing on and bringing back lunar samples from the moon's far side. China once again demonstrated to the world its advanced aerospace technology and its ability to bring its plan to fruition. China has on multiple occasions announced that it will send its astronauts to the moon before 2030. The most recent one was during a press conference on April 24th when the China Manned Space Agency stated that the development for China's manned lunar landing program are progressing smoothly, with the aim of achieving a moon landing by Chinese astronauts before 2030. Apart from China, the United States also had its own crew lunar plan called Artemis, and the latest plan is to send astronauts to the moon in September 2026 paying the way for U.S. new round lunar exploration since Apollo missions in the 20th century and as a base for missions to the Mars. Undoubtedly, manned lunar undertaking is one of the symbols of a country's highest technical prowess. According to the implementation results of the two countries' moon exploration plans in the past, China is often able to achieve its goals as planned while the United States tends to delay in their efforts. Thus, the two countries' timetables for manned lunar landing seem to be getting close if the United States should again delay their plans in the coming future. Like it or not, whoever makes it first will have far-reaching consequences. If the United States takes the lead as promised, it will consolidate its status as the global sole superpower. If the United States' plan should be delayed further so that China can catch up in landing their astronauts on the moon before the US, the global technological landscape will be rewritten and the world will gradually usher in an era of coexisting two superpowers. While the initial surge in lunar exploration in the 1960s may have been driven by political factors, the new run expedition was spurred more by the true allure of space exploration. Beyond the tantalizing resources like the helium-3, a future energy source and other types of minerals not abundant on Earth, Moon has long been deemed as a perfect transfer stop to Mars. So one day, Moon might become an industrial hub and the transit station for deep space exploration in our solar system. What country with a big ambition can resist this temptation? In the 21st century, several countries have proposed returning to the moon as part of their space exploration and launched 10 or so lunar landing probes, but most of their missions have either failed or not to the satisfaction that they were intended to be. Up to present, Israel and Russia have failed, India and Japan succeeded the third time they tried, and United States one failed and the other a partial success. Only the United States and China have their systematic manned lunar programs. While the United States may have inherited some of the crew moon landing techniques decades ago, only have China pursued it from scratch through its Chang'e program. From 2007 to 2020, China completed the lunar exploration phase beginning with Chang'e 1 through five missions, culminating in the recent historic soft landing and sample returning Chang'e 6 mission on the far side of the moon. So before we could bet on which country would succeed in first landing their astronauts on the moon in 21st century, let us have a brief comb through their respective moon exploration plans and their implementation results. In 2004, China officially launched the Lunar Exploration Project and named it the Chang'e Project after an ancient Chinese moon goddess. The Chang'e Project was planned to be completed by 2020 in three phases. The first phase is to develop and launch the lunar probe satellite and obtain the high-definition 3D map that would provide reference for future soft landings. The second phase is to conduct the soft landing and robotic survey of the moon. The third phase is to conduct the unmanned lunar sampling and returning mission. 
The first phase was completed by the Chang'e 1 and Chang'e 2 lunar satellites from 2007 to 2010, which obtained the highest less loosened full moon map in the world. 2013 and 2019 see the Chang'e 3 and Chang'e 4 set off and landed on the near and far side of the moon, respectively. The latter being the human's first ever spacecraft that has landed and patrolled on the far side of the moon. Chang'e 5 in 2020 and the recent Chang'e 6 sample returning mission again see China's spacecraft set their foot on the near and far side of the moon, respectively. The latter also being the human's first ever spacecraft that lands on and retrieves moon's far side samples and back to Earth. Having achieved a manned exploration, China's next horizon is lunar camp establishment and manned lunar landing. Subsequent missions after Chang'e 6 will make preparations for future manned landings and establishment of lunar basics. Not surprisingly, China's manned lunar program now has a detailed timetable with the target set before 2030. The plan is to launch two supercarrier rockets to send a manned spacecraft and a lunar lander, respectively, into lunar orbit. The spacecraft and lunar lander will rendezvous and dock with each other, after which the astronauts will enter the lander and make a descent onto the lunar surface. The most recent news for China's manned lunar program was Li Tao at a press conference on April 24th that believed the Shenzhou 18 manned mission, which stated that the conceptual development of major systems such as the super long March 10 carry rocket, Mengzhou manned spacecraft, Lanyue lunar lander, and the lunar seal had been completed, and the prototype products and various tests are being carried out in an all round way. The thermal tests of spacecraft and lander have basically been completed, and the rocket is carrying out ground tests of its various types of engines, all with the goal to achieve manned landing on the moon before 2030, going smoothly. Now let us review the United States manned lunar program, Artemis, named after an ancient Greek goddess. Let's be clear that the United States had already a three man lunar landing between 1969 to 1972, a great feat by human beings at that time that cannot be over exaggerated. But there has been no such endeavor since the end of Apollo 17 mission in 1972. Although the United States has made brilliant achievements in Earth orbit, Mars, and other deep space explorations. It has not landed a man or even a spacecraft on the moon again for more than 50 years, till as recently as in 2024, when two lunar landing missions, Peregrine Mission 1 and IM-1, changed that. So before we talk about the Artemis program, we brief you the two lunar missions. The Peregrine Mission 1 that was launched on January 8th, 2024 carried the first U.S. built lunar lander since the crew Apollo 17 mission in 1972. Unfortunately, it was an unsuccessful one due to propellant leakage developed on its way to the moon that prevents the lander from completing its mission. Follow the heels of the Peregrine Mission 1, the IM-1 probe was launched on February 15, 2024 and its Odysseus lander successfully became the first spacecraft to soft land on moon since Apollo ages in 52 years. After touching down on the lunar surface, the lander tipped to an unplanned 30-degree angle, which resulted in its solar panel not facing the sun, and prevented it from acquiring sustained energy needed. All payloads on it remained functional though for a week, and on March 23rd, the mission was declared over for a lack of energy. The mission was deemed overall successful, though not perfect. Now get down to the Artemis program. It is a U.S. government-funded human spaceflight program that was formally approved by the then U.S. President Donald Trump. 
Also in Ixo Go is to send astronauts to the moon and back by 2024 and to establish permanent residency that will pave the way for future manned mission to Mars. The Artemis program is led by NASA and involves a number of U.S. commercial space companies and international partners. And as of now, 42 nations have signed up to be included in its Artemis Accords, with more to follow as expected. The NASA-led Artemis program includes the Space Launch System rocket, ground exploration equipment, Orion spacecraft, manned landing systems, next-generation spacesuits, rovers, and the Gateway Lunar Space Station. Orion's first launch on the Space Launch System was originally set in 2016, but faced numerous delays. It launched on November 16, 2022, as the Artemis 1 mission and successfully tested the uncrewed SLS and Orion spaceship around the Moon. Artemis 2 is planned to be the first crew test flight of SLS and the Orion spacecraft. Artemis 3 is planned to be the first American crew lunar landing since Apollo 17 in 1972, which will send astronauts to explore the region near the Moon's South Pole. On January 9, 2024, NASA again postponed its main mission to the Moon, with the Artemis 2 and Artemis 3 mission postponed until September 2025 and September 2026, respectively. But as is often the case, as recently as during a fiscal year 2025 budget hearing on May 23, 2024, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson hinted that the Artemis 3 might delay again by saying that he will only commit to the current Artemis 2 liftoff day of September 2025 if astronaut safety is not compromised, which makes the timetable for Artemis 3 manned lunar mission look precarious again, especially when compared to China's firm headway so far. It seems eventually that these two countries will see their astronauts on the moon in a very close time slot. So which country do you think would first make it in this new round lunar expedition? Leave your comment and give your reasons below. Thank you for watching. I'm Paul from China. Subscribe to me. I will bring you China's latest tech event.